D. Roy Cruz here, your life applications officer. Um, getting back to it, um, going back to my friend in Erie, Pennsylvania, um, her dad was a Christian and a good Christian. Did he really, really, really dislike me for the, or he didn't dislike me, he thought I was a really nice kid, he thought I was a good guy. He just didn't want me getting, you know, uh, all boyfriend, girlfriend with his daughter. Okay. Leave that out. Um, he didn't want me making any special plans for him and for making plans for me and his daughter together as a couple, you know. Now, right off the top, we jump and we call that racism, but. One thing that I do have to consider, um, let me explain the difference between racism and um, stereotypes and um, biases or whatever right now. Okay. Um, As a Christian, did he did he not want me to not date his daughter because of the color of my skin? Or did he not want um, me to be dating his daughter because of what he feels that the color of my skin represents? politics behind the color of my skin okay it is true that white women if they are women outside the ghettos if they are women you know of the suburbs they're high class white women you know or middle class white women and they are with black guys not only do they or not only do they not only are they a problem for the so-called black community, but they're also problems for the white community. Okay, because the white community, let's say a man is a good dad and he just wants his daughter to be in love with whoever she's in love with. Um, and that's it, you know, but he just wants her to use her head um, as she's doing it. He doesn't want her to be one of them naive types to just marry or hook up with any old jump something, something or another. You know, he just wants, he wants her to be married to principle, married to um, the way he raised her. He wants, you know, he doesn't want his daughter to be married to someone is going to turn her life completely opposite of her family and what her family tradition is. That's fine. Um, but I told my daughters as black as I am when they were, when they were, you know, going to, when they were entering high school and you know that I, I told them, about how the way I feel about the black men, black youngsters in our neighborhood. I really don't want my daughters with, you know, it's just, you know, now, I mean, this is the difference though. If my daughter knows what she's doing, if she knows how to pick her men the way her dad would pick men for her, yeah, she can hook up with, she can hook up with a black guy, she can hook up with, uh, yeah, she can hook up with a, a Arab guy, a Mexican, if she knows what she's doing, if she knows how to tell the difference, if she knows, you know, she can she can hook up with anybody she want to hook up with. But if she's just out there following and falling in love, you know, with whoever falls in love with her and all that kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? If she ain't, you know. 
really, 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 really sorting it out. Okay? And I think all women should sort it out regardless of whatever walk of life they come from. They should sort it out in a church. They should sort it out in Beverly Hills. They should sort it out, you know, in the ghetto. They should sort it out. Okay? They should sort it out, you know, in the Trump family. You sort it out. Just don't hook up with any old jump somebody because, oh, you think you have one one or two things in common, you know. Um, this is the thing. I don't think that racism, what we call, what we namely know today to be racism, is really racism. Um, I think that it's politics um, of racism. Um, it's politics of, you know, and I believe people can be stereotypical, like, you know, um, I think a lot of people think they know you before you open up your mouth. They think they know you before you, you know, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? People at my job, you know, customers are surprised a lot of times that security, um, you know, that security is black, you know, um, and they, you know, some people, they got a problem with security. Some people, they got a problem with security, depending on who is doing it. That, that black kid that shot that black security guard that was just going to work, parking his car and going to work. He shot him because he got a problem with security, period. Okay? And in his sick mind, he thinks that his crime and his friends doing crime is going to take over and they're going to have their utopia by killing all the good people. And that's a sick idea. Um, but, you know, that's, that's Democrat. That's Democratic, though. Really. That's how Democrats, you know, you have your you have your Democrats and then you have your ghetto Democrats, okay? That's a very, very degenerate Democrat idea. But Democrats think like that. Democrats think that if you can't have it naturally, if you can't have it easy, just take it. Okay? They believe in war first, try to explain later. Okay? That's the way they are. They believe in hate first, love way later. You know. Um, they believe that everybody's guilty until proven innocent. Okay, so you go out here, you got these degenerates wanting these, you know, these fine people to prove their innocence to a degenerate world. You know. And that, to me, that's like, kiss my hide, okay? Um, no, you prove your innocence to us, okay? You prove your innocence to us, because you're the one that are out there doing crime while I'm at work. You're the one that's sleeping during the day when I'm busting my behind. You're the one that's dressing like you got nothing important to do, nothing, no place important to go. And the words that come out of your mouth, oh my God. No, 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 sir. You prove your innocence to me. I'm not proving my innocence to you. Because I don't owe you squat. Okay? And that's the way I feel about, that's the way I feel about all my people. These people. But for by all of them. I mean, not all of them, but any of them that think that they can My man Jeffrey Gibbs can right kick some butt in this episode. Did what I did, or, or what I would do. You don't swing at somebody while they swinging at you. Lock those arms. We getting old. 
me and Gibbs, we old. We, we, you know, we can't be, we can't be swinging back these young, young little twigs, okay? These young little, little quick snakes, okay? We can't do it. Anyway, um, so I do believe sometimes that I got to check my food. Hold on. I got to check my food. Air fried chicken. Yeah. Um, I do believe that it's not so much about the color of your skin as it is about the politics, about the color of your skin. Now, there was a bunch of news running around about um, a bunch of news running around about these Haitians. Okay, committing crime. You know, these Haitian refugees committing crime um, in our cities and stuff like that. And when you give people a description or a race name to someone committing a crime, a lot of people they immediately, you know, go on a hate binge. Like, you know, you're just being hateful or whatever. But I met, I met a Haitian dude. Just recently. Now, I know the difference between Haitian dudes and African dudes or Haitian Africans or however that goes. I'm not sure exactly where Hades lies on the map, but I do know this. I met a Haitian dude. He walked in looking for a fight. Nobody bothered him or anything. He walked in there demanding his way. Pushing people out of the way and putting his hands in people's faces, sticking his middle finger up. He don't know nobody in that place from Adam. Don't nobody know him. And he walked in there tripping. How you think that makes me feel towards Haitian people now? We got that going on and then we got people, you know, talking about, you know, Haitians in our country on the news. So when I see the when I see like what I just saw a few weeks ago, that that you know you know what I'm saying now there's Haitians in the movies. There's some good Haitians, you know, that are actors, you know, in TV. There's Haitians that are winning TV awards and and all like that. They're aspiring actors and all like that. But there's a lot of Haitians in our country and other countries across the globe committing crime. They commit crime, you know, now they commit certain crimes. Their crimes are more usually rape and uh, usually uh, theft. They don't really usually kill people. They usually commit rape. Rape is their number one thing, rape and, and theft. Now, now, if you don't give, if they break into your house or or whatever, they will cut you to pieces if you try to protect your daughter or your, your wife. You know, um, your daughter, your wife, your money, whatever, your, your, your food, they will cut you up. You know, they bring one of them big old jungle knives with them or they bring uh, a meat cleaver with them or something. They don't usually use their hands in a fight. They usually come with a, with, a, with a heavy blade, a heavy blade, okay? Um, so I met one of these guys. Something told me to keep my distance, but I made sure that the women there were safe. If I, had, if I got to tackle the guy to the floor or something, you know, or call the police or whatever I got to do to keep these women safe, I'm going to do it. But he was coming in there acting a fool, you know what I mean? He come in there pushing people out of the way and then he gonna like, cause the women knew that he was trouble, you know, like these African women that were there, they knew he was trouble. <laughs> uh, I'm not alone on this. They knew, they saw him, they, oh. What's he doing here? You know. And he started throwing kisses, so I'm like, okay, don't make me have to like, you know. But am I wrong to have, after going through that experience and then matching that with everything I've heard about 
Haitian people? Is it wrong for me to, you know, because that's what I've seen. That's my experience with Haitian people is what I've seen and what have I and what I've experienced. So is it wrong for me to want to um, have a stereotype about Haitian people? There's only one group of Haitian people that I don't that I don't have a stereotype, and that's the ones that are rich. You know, I see you walking down the street, man. I'm grabbing the kids. I'm locking myself in the car, the building, and I'm locking the place down. I'm sorry, okay. I, you know, I don't want to see that guy come around us that I experienced that with too many more times. I don't want him around. I really don't. I don't want people like that around me. This guy, like this guy, Haitian dude, coming there in a in a in a suit and speaking good English. You know, and and this guy didn't speak any English, but a Haitian dude coming here in a, in a nice suit. See how much? See how he he brings up the 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 now now Haitians have to fall under a certain category in order to be accepted because of people like him and people like the people that you see in the news all the time. Okay. Um. So, you know, we now expect a lot out of Haitian people before we trust them. Because why? They raped enough of our women, okay? And they really, you know, if 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 really injured a lot of people and done a lot of damage to property and all like that and you name it, trying to steal people's stuff, okay? And it's very common with them, okay? So am I wrong for having a stereotype towards Haitian people? I don't hate them because I know there's some good Christian Haitian people out there. Matter of fact, there used to be in my church, there used to be a, a guy from Hades, two of them that would come to my church and preach all the way from Haiti. And there were missionaries that went to Haiti. They would bring people back with them and try to get them, you know, they would bring preachers. Um, I think even my buddy um, Yankston um, was Haitian. No, he wasn't. He was just African. He wasn't Haitian. Um, yeah, uh, I forget about. I forget what his first name was. Yankston, Yankston, or something like that. Um, me and him spent a lot of time. You know, I spent a lot of time escorting him from place to place, and that. Me and my friend Keith escorting him around, helping him do ministry and that. And uh, Sam was his first name. Sam Yankston. Yank Yankston, yeah. Yeah, he married a white girl. A white girl that um, was kept from him for, for a long time. Um, kept from him for a long time. And it wasn't until... They uh, both graduated college together and, you know, they were separate for a long time and he went out and did his thing. She went out and did his thing. They came back later and he came back for his bride. He found her and he married her, you know, because she loved him. OK, he helped her to understand that you can't go in the way of your father on this one. Your father don't get to choose who you love. He might choose your safety. And I commend him for that. But he doesn't get to choose who you love. And so I think she might have even got married to someone else and it didn't work out. And he showed up on the scene and took his bride. It should have been his from the jump, but. That's where racism takes us. You know what I mean? It, it just messes things up. Um, Sam was not like other people like himself. He was Sam. And Sam knew that, hold up, I'm Sam, okay? Sam Yankston was a good man. He was a good pastor. He was a good um, leader. Um, he's a leader now, especially. But he was... Uh, he was here on a visa back when 
we used to escort him all over the place and we had such a great time with him, you know what I mean? Going around and, you know, eating and um, just having a great time. Going to all these restaurants and all that kind of thing. I miss Sam. I really do. Matter of fact, I can't wait to hug the guy again. One of these days, I'm going to see him again. I, that was my brother. You know what I mean? But he told me some bad things about Africa. And when he tells you these things, you have to sort it out. You have to sort it out. You can't just like go on this binge and say, oh, well, we don't want to be racist to any particular people and blah, 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 blah. Look, no, you got to sort it out. That's one thing I got to admit white folks don't like to do. Just as bad as black people don't like to do it. They don't like to sort it out. They think it's not your job to sort it out. If you don't sort it out, you're a racist. That's just like, let's say you say you don't hate dogs, but a dog comes to your doorstep asking for food, and you say, get out of here because it's a dog. Okay, well, wait. You said you don't hate all dogs. Okay. Okay, that's a cute one there. That that's a that's a collie. That's a that's a beagle. He ain't gonna hurt a fly. Okay, and look at him. I mean, he's clean and 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 he's he's somebody's pet. And they deserve it. What do you mean? You well, he's a dog. I had to get rid. Of. Well, you just said you don't hate all dogs. You lied. How can you hate that beagle? How can you hate that little pug? Okay, come on. You know what I'm saying? Me, I don't want no dogs. Okay? So I don't care what kind of dog it is. If it's a nice little sweet dog, I'll hold on to it until you come get it. But me personally, I'm not taking care of nobody's dog. I will take that dog straight to the Animal Rescue League. I'm not, I don't want no dogs. Okay? I think my food's done. But I don't want no dogs. Um... But I don't hate dogs, okay? There were times dogs came running up on me and I could have shot them. Pepper sprayed them. Went crazy. He didn't want to bite me. So I let him follow me home and then brought him home and found who he belongs to. If we could do that, if we could treat people that same way, it wouldn't be so bad. You know what I'm saying? That we could treat people the same way. You know what I mean? But that's where, you know, people have more a love of animals than they have a love of people. People have more a love of animals than they have a love of people. And I'm not saying that there isn't some horrible racial, um, sick, racially sick people out there. Um, but there's also a very big breach in the racism category, a big breach there, um, because I think white people are more stereotypical and protective today than they are racist. Um, when you call somebody a racist, you're talking about them being racist to everybody but themselves. So if, uh, if a white person don't like me, but he likes the Indian guy, I have to ask, or if he likes, he if he don't like me, but he likes other black people, I got to ask. What's the difference? Help me. Let me in on a secret. Okay, that's not racism. You know what I'm saying? And I know people on my job where somebody will say, oh, he's racist. Okay, why do you like you so much? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Y'all making me late getting out of here because y'all getting together talking. While I'm trying to punch out. He loves you. As soon as he comes to work, he wants to pull you to the side and, and chat with you. That's not racism. That's something else. Because if he was racist, he wouldn't like any black people. He wouldn't like any black people. So he, therefore, he's not really racist. You can't not paint to You know, when you say racism, you mean you hate somebody because of the color of their skin. You ignorantly just want to ban that group of people because you think you're you're killing your losses by banning that group of that particular group of people. 
Okay, and I've heard white people on the Colin Flaherty channel, even though Colin Flaherty's channel, I don't think he's racist, but a lot of his subscribers are. They, you know, you know what I'm saying. They, their, their subscribers are. Okay, um, and they say things like they say the most racist stuff, like. Well, we're not going to let the black race survive just based on a few black people. First of all, it's more than a few black people. You worse than D-Roy Cruz. There are way more than a few black people that, that got this crap together, brother. We're talking about a certain percentage of every single state in the United States got their crap together, even in the worst places, even in Compton. Where all my black subscribers come from. <laughs> okay. There's some good people out there. Even some of my black subscribers. I, I have given them compliments. Okay. Even though they're even though they're idiots, I've given them compliments. Okay. Um, but um there there's a difference there. You can't be racist. To one black guy, not racist to another. You can't be racist to black people, and not be racist to African people, or racist to um, black people, and not be racist towards other melan melanated people. Come on, what's the you know? There's a difference. If I like, if I if I like, if I like certain kinds of women per se, and I'm not too crazy about other women, okay. That's not a racism, that's a preference. Okay? I'm going to give you a little secret about me and women. I don't like fake anything. I don't like fake hair. I don't like colored hair. I don't like fake eyelashes, fake eyebrows, fake nails, fake, 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 fake nothing. Okay? Okay? I don't like makeup to make you look like a clown. I, I, you know, you put so much makeup on it, make you look like a clown. New. No. You know, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm racist. I'm, I'm, I'm racist towards all that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know. Um, but. Uh, you know, that's just one of them things. You know, like. I believe that my friend over in Erie, her dad wasn't as much race racist as he was trying to eliminate um, his losses because, you know, but when you make it a sport to do racism, like when racism doesn't, when racial issues don't come to your front door and you make it about race, that's a racist. You know what I'm saying? Where, oh, what are we going to do today? It's a boring day. It's nice and warm outside. Let's go kill some. Let's go kill some of the brothers. Let's go down to the, the ghetto and kill some of the brothers because we got nothing better to do. That's racist. Oh, but in this idea that black folks can be racist. Don't make me cuss. Anybody can be racist. Unless you're a toddler. Anybody can be racist. Okay. Oh, and this stuff about, oh, well, white, black people don't have the, the strength to be racist. They don't have enough money to be racist. So you're saying that money is racism. You're saying that college and good education is racism. You're saying that living in the White House with the picket fence is racism. You're saying privilege is racist. Okay. Um, I have to totally disagree with that. Totally disagree with that. Um, money isn't racism unless you spend that money on racism. Okay? Education isn't racism unless you, like these people indoctrinating our kids into gayism, Unless you spend 
you know, uh, school funds on teaching people how to be racist. And back in the day, uh, that one lady proved that's why she went crazy and did all that damage to them whites and white and black kids to the point to where they had had to actually attack a, a white lady for being racist towards white people because she just took it too far. But she said one thing right. She did prove that in the school system, because that's what drove her crazy, in the school system, they were teaching white kids how to segregate. They were teaching white kids how to be um, anti-black. Okay. Um, but again, let me jump from there to saying that, again, it's not just, and that was a while back. That was way back in time. But um, it's not just um, a matter of people hating you for the color of, the, of your skin. Because if people hated you for the color of your skin, white, would, white people wouldn't be outside trying to get tans all the time. Okay? So it's not your skin color. I think you're racist against your own skin color. Okay, your race is against your own skin color, and I've 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 seen and met so many black people. You know, um, when they talk about racism, they get deep down into all the way down to the 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 the, the skin color. They don't just you know what I'm saying, but you got to understand. Um, black folks in this country, and I'm closing right here. Black folks, my people, keep saying black folks, I mean to say my people. My people in this country have constantly made it about them. They made it about them, you know, instead of doing, for example, instead of doing good things with our hair, and cutting our hair and admitting that we can't do things with our hair like white folks do stuff with their hair, okay? We'll just decide to make all these, you know, make all these hair dudes, these hair dudes that, you know, represent the fact that we don't, that we have a problem with ourselves, okay? Um... And usually, you know, when you, it, usually where you're at, you can, it, you can relate to it because there's other people out there that look at it, you know, just like white people can look at black people and, and, and know, you know, what hairstyles they like and, and all like that. Um, they know. And, uh, you know, they know the difference between uh, plaits and um, braids and relaxing your hair and, and, and all like that. You know what I mean? It's not like they don't know. And then when you see, and then, you know, when you see uh, black folks that are wealthy, that they're, you know, Making a good bucks. How do they do their hair? They don't walk around with these little twigs in their hair and these little these little weaves in their hair. No, they relax their hair. They relax their hair. Um, and they braid their hair and they you know, they pay to get their hair done within the genre, within the culture that their hair exists in. Okay? The hair don't exist in weave culture. Okay? You gonna walk around here looking like a white girl and then go home and take all that off. You're gonna look in the mirror and, and, and pull that off. And when you go down and lay uh down with your husband, you look like Pinkett Smith. Okay? Thank God you got nice eyes and nice lips, because you ain't got nothing on your head. Because that was all weave. Okay? That ain't us, people. That's not black culture. That's not who we are. You know what I'm saying? 
We're them people to get up in the morning and take all day to do our hair, if you're a woman. And then we say, hey, I'm black. Sorry, but I'm black. I can't get up and just comb it back like you do. My hair don't work like that. That's fine. It's okay. You know, but no, we, like I read that scripture to you yesterday in the video that I did yesterday. We fight in war among ourselves because we don't have, but why do we want it? We want it because of pleasure, because we think these white people are getting pleasures that we can't get. And so we want to call it racism instead of jealousy. It's not racism, it's jealousy. It's what it is. But, you know, you like to use white people because at one time it was just us and white people in this picket. In this pickle. 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 It was just us and white people. There wasn't too many Indians and Arabs and Mexicans and they were here too, but they weren't, they weren't, you know, they weren't slaves. They weren't the ones that were picked to, you know, the, to make white people richer or however you want to put that. So, you know, you just decided you can't forgive the white man for that. And you just, you just keep on, you know what I mean? But as long as you keep on, keep on making it about you and the white man, you'll never get ahead in life. You'll always be miserable. You'll always be a racist or reverse racist, whatever you want to call it. It's still racism on your part. You're the one holding this up. You're the one monumentalizing racism. Let it go. Okay? And deal with the real racism. racism. Ugh, I can't talk today. The real racism ugh, that really exists. Okay? So, part three. Um, thank you for watching. See you soon.